Hi guys, welcome to Horse Racing on Another Planet with me, Liz. And with me, Izzy, and we've got a very exciting week for you this week with the return of the flat. So we're going to review the Lincoln and the racing from last weekend. We've also got a little bit of Grand National buzz and unfortunately the very sad passing of Highfield Princess. We're also going to be taking a look to the weekend where it's the Veterans Handicap Chase at Haydock, the Queen's Cup at Musselburgh, and there's some action overseas at Maydam where we find the Dubai World Cup on Sunday. Um, Liz, we'll start it off then. We'll have a little look at the, the flat season. Obviously, it started uh, with a bang and this weekend. Twitter was awash with the flat is back. Um, but there was a bit of a sad narrative to the start of the season, wasn't there, with, you know, the very sad passing of Highfield Princess. Um, she was described by one newspaper as being um, a mare of a lifetime. So she had 39 runs, 14 wins. Um, she took almost two million in prize money and won six group victories. It's insane, isn't it? It's so sad. No, it was. And people, I think people forget, like sometimes with these types of horses, you're straight away thrown into kind of listed races, group races. But she started off her career rated as just 57 um, in the summer of 2020. Um, and she's just really progressed from those low graded handicaps to, as you were saying, she, she won four group ones and two group twos. Um, her first big win came at Royal Ascot in the Buckingham Palace Stakes, uh, where she won at quite big odds at 18 to 1. Um, but she, she's gone on to win races such as the Nunthorpe, the King George Stakes over at Goodwood and the Prix de la Bay only last October um, at Longchamp. And they even took her further afield, if you have a look over to Hong Kong, um, where she came a respectable sixth. Um, but I think, as you were saying, everyone has been saying that she was a, such a likeable mayor. Um, and maybe we, sh we should obviously be grateful for being able to see her when we did. Um, but of course, thoughts and connections um, with everyone at yeah, this sad time. Yeah, we knew she'd retired, but obviously <clears throat> just extra sad to hear that she wasn't able to recover um, from that injury that she'd sustained. So... Um, moving on from Highfield Princess, so we're it's a bit of an eclectic mix this week. We've got jumps flat, jumps flat, but we're back to the jumps. We've got the Grand National coming up in a couple of weekends' time. I'm throwing a giant party for it. Um, <laughs> you're gonna dress up as something, you're dress up, it's red rum. Um, <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking of doing a Grand National themed cocktail. So we'll get some sort of hashtag horse racing on another planet cocktail ideas, guys, for the Grand National would be great. Um, but it's quite a few non-runners, um, you know, that have come out, come out of the race. Most notably, Hewick. I'm personally gutted. I was gutted with the Gold Cup because I thought he had a fantastic chance. I'm gutted with the Grand National. I'm a been behind this Hewick story the whole time. When we did our Cheltenham preview a couple of weeks ago, I said to you, because we were talking about, you know, horses don't often do the Gold Cup Grand National double. And we said, oh, it doesn't matter, but it'll win the Grand National. Now he's not even no, winning. Did you know that he only cost 800 quid? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I might have heard that song. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but three to under fives out as well. And Mr. Coffee. Yeah, there were quite a few today that have been scratched. Um, but yeah, as you were saying, Hewick is opting to go for the Aintree Bowl, which oh. is on the Thursday of the meeting. Um, Aintree meeting goes Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so that's when uh, we will see him. I, obviously, I, he was given top weight for the national, wasn't he? Um, and I wonder if that probably mm -hmm. paid played a part to play in their decision yeah. to switch. Um, obviously, he was taken out the Gold Cup, as you said. That was due to the ground, too yeah. soft. Um, but, yeah, he is aiming for the entry bowl. Um, and after that race, he may go for the Gold Cup at Punchestown in May, which uh, you might see him there, is he? 
I mean, oh yeah. Oh, how exciting. I love Hewitt so much. And I I mean, it's probably got a pretty good chance in the in the Aintree Bowl. I was having a little look at the Aintree Bowl earlier and there's some really some of my favourite races. Um, so the year that Q Card should have won his gold cup, he went on and won the Aintree Bowl 2016. Um, but you had two wins for Silvignaco Conti in that race. Um, Nakara was a little old favourite that won at 10 years old. Great. In the Aintree Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Nakara. I thought it was Nakara, Paddy Brennan and Tom George. It was a Beautiful, beautiful horse. Um, so, yeah, obviously 2021-22 was won by Clanders Oboe. And um, and then the last winner was Shishkin. Yes, it was Shishkin last year. Yeah. Um, with, but with you know we were talking about so we were talking about a few weeks ago around the lack of British runners. Yeah. Um, with three under through five, um, who's who's been taken out? He was one of only six horses uh, trained in Britain that was guaranteed a run. Talking of the flat, we had the flat back this weekend, um, and you know obviously. News aside from Highfield Princess, we did have the return of the Lincoln as well. Um, what did you make of the winner, Mr. Professor? The odds of the winners were insane. It were. And I did make a point at the time to say last week that no favourite, had well, not no favourite. I think there were four favourites in the past 20 run-ins of one. Yeah. So it definitely wasn't a favourites race. Um, I'd just like to point out that... Um, my hope in Vetiver finished 16th of 20, and your hope, <laughs> Izzy, of Dutch decoy finished 12th. So I think we did really well last week. Um, mm, yeah. Just when I thought you were doing an I told you so. <laughs> favourite no. won't win. Yeah, but neither more the one I picked, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, <laughs> well, yours came 12th and mine came 16th, so you won that one. What did we have? It was like 28 to 1, 16 to 1, 22 to 1, and 20 to 1 were the first four. I mean, yeah, there's some value like there. Mr. Professor's was 33, isn't he? Like, oh, God, yeah, 33. Jesus. 33. Well, so, well, well done. I well was done going to say, back. well done if you found him. Yeah, I didn't. Did you see it's migration close. at the start of that? What happened there? Just <laughs> and, and then I he went was just on like, there. nah, not having like, it. 30 seconds after the race, and it was like, migration's been retired. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a chance. God, just didn't feel like it today. You have to retire in that quickly. That's um, how I feel every year. I wish I could retire for every time I didn't want to fancy going to work. <laughs> Oh, I wish we all could do that. Um, a, a big win for Dylan Cooner as well um, in the Brocklesby. I'll let you pronounce that horse. This is miniature. <laughs> miniature. It's just that. It's just miniature with a Z in front. <laughs> miniature with a Z in front. I know. Oh, but a great win for him as well. And uh, exciting. Personally, I've, I know you, you're a, a firm fan of the National Hunt. And I, I do agree. Um but I personally was quite excited to see the flat back. Um, so one of one of the horses of the weekend that I wished I was on that I wasn't, and it wasn't Mr. Professor, it was Via Sistina. It's gone from George Bowie out to Australia and absolutely flew home at Rose Hill early hours of Saturday morning. Amazing. Well done, Via. So one I, I didn't have her in my tracker, which has upset me <laughs> greatly. <laughs> Because she flew home. So this week's um, tweet of the week for Fan Corner, um, it's where I choose one tweet that I liked um, and we talk about it and Izzy chooses another. Um, so this week, mine is uh, Planet Sport Ambassador Harry Cobden, who, <laughs> um, <laughs> we're laughing about it already, um, who had a face-off um, with... James Bowen over, obviously, the Jockey Championship. I don't know who has seen it, but it was basically a video of them just dissing each other, which was actually, this is sometimes what this sport needs, um, is a bit of laughter, um, and they definitely provided that. Uh, Izzy, have you seen it? I have, and my favourite part was uh, 
Harry being humbled by Sean Bowen, who joined the chat and said, don't forget where you come from, Harold, with a lovely picture of Harry um, cleaning what looks a very, very dirty looking toilet. <laughs> with a really suspicious look on his face as well when he's cleaning it. Like, did you cause that mess, Harry? Um, so yeah, that was, it was awesome. The comments, the comments to Sean's post were my favorite bit. Um, we had classic blogger top comment, but now nah, that's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, awesome. It's been a good rivalry. It has been a really good rivalry. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Certainly. Yeah, it's, and I don't. Yeah, we have. I don't think we've had this one this very close for probably a little while. Well, yeah, time that I can remember. Yeah, certainly, um, certainly hotting up, and um, I just I wonder what those celebrations are going to be like at the jump finale meeting. Um, yeah, it's not Sunday. long, is it? Towards no, the end of April. Not long now. So. Uh, what is it, three weeks, something like that? So it's going to be very exciting. Very exciting indeed. Looking forward to that. Will you go to that Sandown finale meeting, Liz? I probably might. I think so. Um, obviously, I'm off to Aintree um, at the start of the month. But, yeah, I'll, I'll try and get to Sandown for that. We're kind of sandwiching it because you're going to Aintree and then I think it's on the following week. And then the week after that is the Guineas slash Punches Town. So... Then that's where I'm going. So we'll have to see. Someone's got to make it. We've got to get that. Got to get that celebration video, really, haven't we? Um, speaking of a rivalry and a deep battle, that brings us on to my tweet of the week. Love the segue there. Um, <laughs> which which is um, mine's from Ollie Bell. And um, he said, watching two old boys go neck and neck for the best part of three miles was a total joy just then. So, so proud of Two for Gold, who has bounced back to form and huge congrats to, connect congrats to connections of Sam Brown, who got the biscuits today. That was epic. Did you see that finish to that race at um, Ascot on Sunday, Liz? I did. I didn't, um, I didn't watch many races um on Sunday and um, but that is one that I did and um yeah it was um yeah it was a, it was a good race one of those where they really both of them and even the one back in third whose name has just really escaped me um, <laughs> um, um they really did like come over that last together and it was uh yeah it was an exci exciting finish so for anyone that thinks that maybe that the oldies don't have it in them anymore they absolutely do i always <laughs> think it's the old i think it's the old guard that always serve up such fantastic battles though i mean not to like wax lyrical about it because we could go on all day but look at the battles between paisley park dashel drasher champ like i always think it's the slightly older horses we love how gutsy they are uh, how brave they are and um yeah two for gold was you know was was up to be honest like when you watch the coverage it's very very close like if you were on two for gold you'd have been going absolutely wild um but yeah a really really great great ride from both both jockeys both trainers um it's lovely to see them be able to kind of shine in that moment um and we've we've got a veterans chase a little bit later in the show haven't we Liz where we're going to have a look at um, have a little look at the odds for the big veterans chase that's going this Saturday at where's the veterans chase this Saturday, Liz? I've got now. It is at um, <laughs> it's it's at Middlesbrough, but hey, not. <laughs> I almost said Sandown because we were just talking about it, but it's yeah. at Haydock up north. So that's it for Fan Corner. Um, don't forget to get your tweets in this week for Fan Corner because we do want to see your Grand National picks and your Grand National memories. So who are you backing in the Grand National this year? Who do you fancy? What's your greatest memories of the Grand National? Um, that little side uh, side one by me that if you've got any good names for cocktails for the Grand National, let me know. Um, and also your flat horses to follow for the season. So we want to get you on Fan Corner next week. Please do keep tweeting in with hashtag HOAP.
The Veterans Handicap Chase is for horses aged nine years and over. Um, it's worth just over £52,000 um, and it's run over two mile four. Um, it gives a good chance, as we were talking about earlier, for the older horses to obviously remain competitive in uh, perhaps their more senior years. Um, Izzy, have you um, have you looked at this race um, yeah, so with the Veterans Handicap Chase, as we just said, it's a great, great race to showcase some of the older horses. And the betting for this is pretty interesting. Also, an absolute shock to me. I did not realise our dancer was a veteran now. All riders on the storm. Where does time go? Like, <laughs> they grow up so fast. Um, so... For, for this week, from Planet Sport Bet, we've got Al Dancer at four to one, Riders on the Storm at nine to two, Thor de Cerisi six to one, Topville Ben, an old favourite there, seven to one, Champagne Mystery at eight to one, Numator at eight to one, Phoenix Way also eight to one, and Bigger the Rest. So, got a nice, interesting field. Who do you like in there, Liz? Um, so, as we were talking about, well, I've said this a million times, so I don't know why I'm repeating myself. But <laughs> if you, yeah, if you watch that veterans handicap chase at Ascot last weekend, um, it was that great finish between Sam Brown and Two for Gold, and it does clearly show that they're still up for it. Um, but for this one, I do like the look of Riders on the Storm, as Izzy said, currently nine to two um, on Planet Sport Bet. Um, but second at the start of the month at Doncaster behind Hon Public. Um, he has won on heavy in the past. It's going to be his second run after a wind up. Um, I think he's still well handicapped and he's he's definitely due a win uh, soon. He's not had one for quite a while. Um, but I thought, um, yeah, his last run where he finished second, um, yeah, was, was decent. So uh, riders on the storm uh, for me. So I'm going against you now. We've got That's a battle right. on here. Got Look what happened last week. A senior veterans battle going on. Um, yeah, well, last week went well, didn't it? Um, so I'm, I like our dancer. Top weight. Yeah, top weight. But he had a fantastic run at Kempton um, last month, you know, second to forward plan. And I just think that, you know, he had an absolutely beautiful spin. Um, I think he could get the better of um, Riders on the Storm here. It's also the Queen's Cup at Musselburgh. Um, it's a class two affair. It's run over one mile six. Um, and this one's for horses aged four years or older. Uh, jockey Daniel Tudhope has won the last two renewals of the race. Um, and obviously, like I was saying, uh, Dex, Dex um, being on our side. Uh, but it was, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it, Izzy, but only because oh. there is, um, there's three usual hurdlers in this. And when I say mm. their names, you'll go, oh, yeah. are they? Um, no, I so noticed them. You've got Harry Fry's Metier, uh, Sweet Fantasy, trained by James Owen, and Alan King's Tritonic, yeah. um, who's actually been chasing of late. Um, those national hunt horses can clearly do it all, oh, chasing, hurdling, flat. Um, but um, a gun to my head for this race, um, I'd say Max Vega, um, who is currently four to one with Planet Sport Bet. Um, he is the current favourite, I believe, um, and he's been running fairly well throughout most of the winter on the all weather. He should be fit, um, but he won his last race at, at Wolverhampton. So, um, yeah, he probably gets the edge for me in uh, Max Vega. The, the Dubai World Cup is so interesting, but I personally, for, for in terms of that kind of interest for trainers from Britain and Ireland, um, there are so many great horses that we're sending over. I've seen some beautiful videos on X this weekend of, um, sorry, this week of Aidan O'Brien's battalion. It's almost reminiscent of Willie Mullins turning up at Cheltenham a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think that uh, the most interesting race to me um, over on that Maidan card is the Dubai Gold Cup. Um, so in that race, uh, current planet sport bet odds, you've got Tower of London at 100 to 30, Trawlerman at 7 to 2, Eldar Eldorov, which is the winner of the English and Irish St. Ledger at 9 to 2 for Roger Varian, um, 
and you've got Siskansi in there at nine to two, Coltrane at 13 to two, some very exciting runners. Um, I'm really excited that Eldar Eldorov's heading over to Maidan for this. I, I think this could be perfect for him. Don't know about you, Liz. Don't know if you're a big Eldar Eldorov fan. I am. I've seen him in the flash a couple of times. <laughs> um, seen him in the flesh a couple of times at the uh, Henry Cecil Open Day at Newmarket. And he is just beautiful. And I was, I, I backed him in the uh, English and Ledger. And I really wanted him uh, to take the double in Ireland um, last season. And, you know, I think he just did not disappoint. So I would love to see him come out and perform really, really well here. Um, but there are some other massive runners across the card as well that you want to be looking out for this weekend. You've got Aidan O'Brien's or Gus Rodin. You've got Luxembourg as well. One time, we always call a one time Derby favourite, Luxembourg, um, heading out to Maidan. So do keep your eye out. There are some fantastic horses running over there this weekend. So um, that's it for this week, Liz. You looking forward to the racing this weekend? I feel like I don't know. It just feels like really at that awkward stage. Yeah, I don't know. I I I I don't know whether to still be. I don't. I don't know. It's just. It's just a strange. It's always a strange it's time. Right. It's just not right. It's I, that. It's we're still on that kind of flat feeling that you get when Cheltenham finishes. It's like the Cheltenham Blues, basically, isn't it? Because there's so much hype, so much excitement. And we spoke the other week about how it dips a little bit and then you're on the build up to Aintree then after that. But um, I am I'm I break up from work this week and I can now really start to get excited for the Grand National. Um, that Aintree Bowl has definitely taken my eye with Hewick. So <laughs> could I go have a little study for that later on? Get some, maybe have a little look at anti-post certainly um but yeah i am looking i'm obviously looking forward to entry because that that is the next kind of big thing after after cheltenham um and then obviously after entry you've got punches towns in in the world of jumps racing um but equally yeah it's going to be good to to get the flat season on. i'm looking for as we said the other week i'm looking forward to the flat season whether if it ever arrives um but um yeah it's a it is a, a bit of a weird time the next few weeks, um, but we do, um, as Izzy was talking about earlier, um, we would like to hear your thoughts on the Grand National, um, either memories of, so whether or not you want to back to moment 100 to 1, um, or whether you were, <laughs> you were there um, when I'm trying to think of that horse that fell over the last, well, no, fell over the first and uh, caused carnage. Who was it? It's like in the 60s. Oh, right. I thought you were just trying to bring up Galvin <laughs> to down my selection for the race this year. I was like, how dare you bring that up again? Galvin will win. <laughs> no, who <laughs> was it? They, what's it what's, they named the fence after him. What, Boy Boy <laughs> there we go. I finally got there. <laughs> I wasn't around then. Um, no. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just for clarity. <laughs> um, but yes, we would like to hear those memories of, of the Grand National. Obviously, you can use hashtag HOAP. Um, Izzy wants to know your cocktail recipes. Um, and also, um, if there's any flat horses uh, on your radar, then uh, please let us know. Um, but thank you for joining us this week. Um, we shall see you next week. <laughs>